I'm really happy to welcome you to our webinar regarding the topic building information modeling. I will now start with two questions and a small video. After that, I will hand over to our today's speaker, Dr. Krieger. Take your time and have a short look to those questions. Just make up your mind. We will come back shortly to the answer. So where do you want to make use of the advantage BIM seems to offer? Human resource management, business development, security issues, competitive advantage, or transformation of redundant processes? The second question, where do you expect to create a challenge when implementing BIM? In transformation of internal workflow, restructuring of cost and budget, qualification and management of personal training, or further acquisitions with asset owners demanding BIM? The answer you will get after our short video. Now I will switch to our external video tool. Here we go. On our journey throughout the world of information management, we start today from the outer, outer limits of environment, from the very top down to the very small, but without value of preference for any of the perspectives. The environment of an asset is influenced by many things. Energy consumption, not only being determined by the location on latitude, but also on the very microclimate. Infrastructure, not only being valued by general site circumstance. And last but not least, it's of great importance of the user where his office is and how the entry makes him feel comfortable. All this information will be needed, but in many cases, they will not be available, although you need it. Some of this information may vary raw and for some construction sites not available at all. One needs to understand the information on my asset are more valuable than the asset itself. Or would you buy a video recorder without a manual? So now I will hand over to our today's speaker, Dr. Krieger. Thank you, Anna, very much for your company on this nice trip. Hello, everybody. My name is Volker Krieger and I'm working as an information management expert for Germany in ISO, the International Standards Organization, and in CEN, the European Standards Organization. ISO, as the International Standards Organization, has today more than 200 members. Without ISO, every train would have its own time. Every train station would have its own time as it used to be when the first railroads were established. My German national body, of course, is called DIN and naturally member of ISO. DIN is also member of SEN. SEN is the European complementary standards organization within the European community. So I'm also working in the SEN committees. SEN standards transfer automatically into national standards of each EU member state. And as of the legal effect, they are very important for each of us in Europe. EU and CEN promote the standards to enable their markets. Six years ago, we have started in our ISO committee, WG13, to transfer the English public available specification, the UK PAS 1192 series, on into a BIM ISO standard. At that time, we have been a very small group of no more than 10 to 15 experts, mainly from UK, Italy, Spain, Germany, and Scandinavia. The first drafts of the new standard series called ISO 19650 came into existence. At that same time, SEN started also on the BIM standards. Later, our colleagues from France and Spain joined us. And meanwhile, we are more than 100 experts in the home of BIM at CEN, the Technical Committee 442. ISO 19650 is, as the former UK PAS 1192, a series of standards on information management with BIM. And how this is being done, I will explain to you in the following. But before, let's have a look at the agenda 
or at the expectations that you have maybe put into listening to us. The expectations. The expectations could be the answer of the questions that we have given to you. Let me have a look at that and uh, let me tell you that in the uh, former webinars we have done, there has been a high percentage on the business development and that is actually true. You will change your business when you're adopting to information management according to 19650 in BIM. And where do you expect probably the greatest challenges? I would imagine that the transformation of internal workflow will be one of the greatest challenges. You will find a restructuring of cost and budget. BIM does not cost more, BIM pays different. Thank you. So let's jump to our agenda for today. I will tackle the problem and I will give you an introduction to the real practice. I will give you a time scale quest for the solution and I will show you three solution approaches, a management approach, a tool approach and a process approach. And in the summary, as this webinar should not go too long, we will only tackle them shortly. In the summary, you will see that there is no end for this webinar, but there may be some solutions that we can go in more detail. Normally we would answer all your questions you have, but we, as this is a live webinar um, recording, I would ask you to put the questions later on in a digital format. Thank you very much. Go to the next slide, Anna, please. Where is the productivity problem on our, on our economy? Do we have one? Yes, we do. Let's look at the time scale. Let's first understand what productivity is. Sorry, here we have the German part of the definition. But let me tell you, productivity is the value of the product produced goods divided by the value of the investment that you need to produce the goods. So when the value of the product goods, the upper part of the ratio, is higher than the lower part, the uh, investment that you need, your productivity enhances. Let us look at what the productivity has been in the last decades in our economy. The blue line is the normal productivity and you see that from the 60s to nowadays the productivity in almost any economy has risen to yeah to more than 200 percent. Um, just remember technology, uh, information technology or pharmaceuticals, you will see that the productivity really does enhance in practice. But let's look at the construction industry and you will see that the productivity has diminished. That is not only shocking, we have to do something about that. It is true and you will find these kind of statistics, these kind of figures in many, many other publications and you see that we really have a problem that we need to solve. Well, you don't believe me? Oh, cool. wait, just show me a picture. This is a picture I found on the internet from a colleague who is working in fire security and you see um, lightning that is protected by uh, some compartment for fire security, but you also see that it has a stamp, a legal stamp, and it is walled in. I don't think maintenance is possible. Where do you think, in reality, this is possible to have that lamp walled in on a real construction site? Well, it is not in the private hobby room of an architect, and it may be somewhere in Germany. Um, yes, Saudi Arabia could also be possible. And we have not done that only for this BSI BIM webinar. The answer is very easy. It has been done in a well-known public facility in Berlin. It is done in our famous international airport. So you see, we have a productivity problem still. Although the airport is coming now into operation, maybe we can solve the problem. So, 
to find out how we go to the solution to solve our information management problems, let's take a look at the time scale. Well, the time scale starts out with the 1990s, where the UK had one of the biggest problems in the digression they had under the times of Margaret Thatcher. There was a large recession, and especially in the construction side. And as of that, two surveys have been launched to find out what is the real problem. These two surveys, uh, here you see the title of one of them, Construction the Team by Sir Michael Latham, the Latham and Egan reports are very famous and the result was very easy but disastrous. 50% of our investment is lost on the construction side because of information management deficit in that times. Immediately, the industry, the governments and other entities were trying to solve that problem. At that time, the cat industry was doing collaborative issues to get, uh, let's say, spreadsheets into the cat. The next step was that they have found an in industry alliance for interoperability has been founded. And that indeed is the predecessor for the future building smart, which is still in existence and is still now working on information in technology on information management in our sector. In 97, a famous software has come to existence. That is the Revit, the parametric 3D modeling software Revit. And shortly after that has been coming to existence, it has been click bought by the, ah, oh, I forgot, at the same time, Burning Smart was industry foundation founding of the version 1.0. That was supposed to be one of the famous formats that would solve our information management in the cat industry. The Autodesk bought Revit, and in 2002, only not quite 20 years ago, there was a publication saying that we should call all these initiatives and efforts, call it building information modeling. So because it is dealing on building sector, it is dealing on information management, and the modeling or management is necessary to find the solution. In 2007, finally, the first 1192 has been published by the UK government to give the UK public a guidance on how to handle information management in building sector, the famous 1192. Next step would be that at the same time, the German has discovered BIM and the first Wikipedia entry was detected in Germany. And now we are approaching the last 10 years. 10 years ago, the first server, a first hardware software system has been established for BIM, as we now call it, to handle BIM information or data. It was established, as you can see, in Europe. Next step, and now we're coming closer to the, to the presence, only five to six years ago, industry foundation classes, the format, the open format to transfer information in our business sector has reached the version 4.0. And now, shortly, in 2015, as I said before, the German DIN has been established and I've been one of the first members working on the first DIN committee, and it was the first work on the 19650 in Germany. At the same time, the German construction industry established the BIM task group, which has already been a UK BIM task group as a predecessor. And nowadays we can take a look what is there. And 16, of course, EU created the BIM task group about the same time the TC442 at Zen was founded. 
And in 2016 already, UK has put the BIM level two from the 1192 standard obligatory for each public project. And that is a route that probably most of the governments in Europe will follow. Many governments internationally do, as uh, Singapore does for many years now. And we will see that in the couple of years, BIM has become a large growth in various clusters all over Europe or in other countries as well. Now, this was given you a history scale on a solution approach. And when you take a look more in detail on that history scale, you will find that more interesting and you find many hooks where you may be able to say, ah, here I understand, that's how it's going. Let's go to one of the three solution approaches. Let's start with a top-down approach. The top-down approach is a management approach or a high-level approach. I'm sure you hear a picture of the ISO 19650 part one. Part one is the part where the principles and concepts are being described. And this is one of the most important pictures. As you can see, it gives you the relation how the 19650 is being situated in the landscape of other normatives or management normatives or management operations in any sector. Take a closer look at what on the left side, on the figure of the left side, that is what we call onion in our ISO committee. If you look at the outer shell of the onion, you see the ISO 9001. Remember ISO 9001, quality management has been established, oh, I would say, 20 years ago. And you might remember, if possibly, that at that time, nobody has taken 9001 in the beginning very serious, but now it's a standard that every industry partner has to take part in to become a contractor. 9001 is the outer shell of the onion. The inner shell is the 19650, so it's partly a little bit of a quality management of the construction business, and it is also an inner shell of the outer uh, information management. ISO 55,000 and ISO 20,500 are the standards that are common and well known in asset management and project management. So all of these three outer standards cover the inner standard of the 19650 and the 19650 has, has the capability to become a standard in which you may have to be certified certified in the in our construction sector in the future internally let's look at the in, in a score of the onion internally we differentiate in the 19650 in the delivery and the operational phase very normal everybody of you know that the whole value chain the whole cycle is going through design, construction, operation, design, construction, operation. So we are not really talking about a value chain, we're talking a value circle. And you see that the interfaces between the two phases are not strict, they reach into each other, which is clearly, and that is where you need to have trans a format over the whole circle, an information format, a data format, over the whole life cycle of the asset that is being able to handle the information completely. That is what IFC, the industry foundation classes, I mentioned in the slide before, is up to in the future. So IFC is an information management standard or format that covers the whole life cycle of the asset through all phases of capex delivery or opex operational. With what phases are, um, you see a small uh, three letter word in both phases, uh, the PIM and the IM, 
that is another concept and principle to be found out when you read the part one of the 19650. That's the model concept. A model is a set of information. A model is what you may call, for instance, a drawing, or it may be a set of process, or it may be a set of any kind of data put into context, and therefore it delivers information. That a model is available in the operational phase, and the model is operational in the delivery phase, and these models um, are connected to each other. How that is in detail, and how that will be managed in detail, is um, could be part of a training to the 19650 when besides this webinar this webinar could not go more into detail i will also mention that the 19650 has become has has got a part that we call part five that is for security 19650 part five will be published at the beginning of next year in German and in English, and it is security-minded BIM. And its companion is the famous ISO 27000 series on IT security. So 19640 is in good relation to many standards and will become very important for our business sector. Well, that was a management approach. Management approach is top down and um, you might have to take a longer look at the slide before and you might have some questions but as i told you please answer the uh, ask these questions at the end we'll be easy we'll be happy to uh, give you answers to that to give you a much better understanding of what 19650 is about and information management is about i would like to take you down now to the bottom up uh, the bottom-up approach is the tool approach. Everybody wants to know which tools do I have to use to do information management? Well, one of the major tools, and that is a tool that some of you may be familiar already, one of the major tools the 19650 is claiming is the so-called common data environment. Here you see the figure of the 19650 part one at the end of the normative. At the end of the normative, you'll find a summary of all kinds of processes. You see there are arrows and there are dots and there are boxes. And these summarizing picture is in one hand only demonstrating that there is a common data environment necessary to handle all processes and all information in a normal BIM project according to 19650. Let me explain that to you a little bit. You see the CDE being something like a black frame around that and with that black frame around that you see the blue arrows which will be some processes that the 19650 management is asking for. In the inner part of the common data environment, you see uh, two wedges. The left wedge is the design phase, the, the design and construction phase, or what we call the CAPEX phase. On the right, you see uh, slightly um, an intermediate between a wedge or a box, and that is being the operational, representing the operational, the OPEX phase. And you see a very small box on the left side, that's the green one. That is the former OPEX phase from a former project. Nobody starts out with an asset without knowing what he has done before or what he needs to know. Then he starts going into the capital expenditure phase where he will spend a lot of money and finally getting the, to the right where we have the bigger box, which is the OPEX phase. The bigger box is representing 75 of the investment cost. The, the wedge on the design, on the CAPEX phase, on the construction phase is only 25% of the investment. Just remember these relations, not quite being uh, the same here of these green areas, but in many projects they may differ. The only thing that 
is important is you can see that from the left to the right, which is an, uh, um, let's say a time scale, from the left to the right, you see the information increasing. That's, um, you see there's the, uh, the black arrow on the right quantity of information. So one of the things that the uh, BIM, according to 19650, is demanding is you must be able to manage all the information. What this picture is telling us that all this information is in one environment. And the 19650 calls this environment the common data environment. Could be called common information environment, but it's called common data environment. Some of you may know this from the predecessors, which may be a document, um, uh, project document management system, but the CDE is more. The CDE is called the racetrack. Oh no, sorry, the picture is called the racetrack. The CDE is the main part of the racetrack of the 19650. The, uh, let's go a little bit more into detail of that tool. Now here you can see the black frame, common data environment. And in the 19650, it's not only called common data environment, it's called common data environment solution and workflow or common data environment process. That is what the tool of the CDE is telling you, you need to be able not only to handle static data, you need to be able to handle workflow and processes. That's why you can see that uh, a lot of concepts or a lot of terms used in here refer to process kind of issues, trigger, stage, event. None of that is static. Most of that is dynamic. Let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> I'm coming to the uh, next approach. And that is one of the last approaches I will display you here in the webinar. If I have already mentioned before when we discussing the tools approach that the tools approach must refer to processes or to workflow. So let's take a closer look on what the 19650 is telling you on workflow on on process. I've picked a singular kind of a process and to demonstrate you how the 19650 is telling you how to handle that. Let's take a look at the process approach of a process that we call mobilization. What do you do when you mobilize? By the way, um, mobilization is a term that is not used in every country in Europe, but we might have to learn how to use that and how to handle that and how to do it when we do BIM according to 19650 in the future. And you can see that this is more or less a recipe uh, giving to you and say, okay, that's when I do BIM, when I do BIM according to 19650, when I do, when I want to do proper information manage in reality, there is one process that I call mobilization and I contract my uh, party that I've appointed to do information management, I contract my party to do. First, mobilize the resources. Mobilize information te technology. These are two different things and you can do that, may do that at the same time. It saves you time. <clears throat> and after you have done that, you should test the project information production methods and procedures. What you have done in step one and in step two does it work? Test it. Many things are not being tested, just being implemented. And here we go. And your client or your asset owner or whoever sits there and it doesn't work. You haven't probably mobilized the resources. You haven't properly mobilized the technology for these resources. There is also a small line um, going back is the small line with A and that is that, of course, knowledge that you have received 
will go back into the system and be used. The information model progressed by subsequent delivery teams for each appointment. Yes, here we talk about a model that I've mentioned before in the very first figure, remember? We are talking about, about a model, an information model, a project information model or an asset information model that we use to hold all the information in a CDE and to have a proper information management. Okay. This still may be too theoretical for some of you. So let's take a look at the next slide of these points 51, 52, 53. And this is also a part of the 19650. That's part of the 19650 part two in the annex. And it gives you a table approach. As I say, it's approach. It's not necessarily what you're doing. This is only a suggestion. You may do it differently, but some of you may know from project management ISO, one of the more ISOs that is covering, uh, that is the, belonging to the family of management. One of you, some of you may know that the RACI matrix is a very usual tool to uh, get you to the information management that you want to. The RACI matrix is very easy. Uh, it, you just fill in when you mobilize information technology, who is the appointing party, which party is third party, which party is leading the whole project and which party is getting contracted. Who is giving the contract? Who is external? Who is leading the responsibility? Who is the asset owner? And you fill in the RACI, the responsibility, the accountability, the consultancy and the information into that matrix. And you have a pretty valuable tool to have a closer handling of information management. So that is the three approaches. And um, we could go on and on forever. You can, you can tell that I've only picked some of the details from the standard, but I will come to the summary now. And I would like for all of us to summarize what we should know now. Which problems should be solved by the 19650 information management with BIM series? The first thing is, and that's the main thing, our productivity deficit. Let's get rid of that deficit in construction sites. And 50% is a lot of money. And this means, that's the second step, let's get rid of the deficit in information and inefficient information management. Do, for instance, the mobilization according to 19650. Test it before you throw it out to your client or to your partner. Handle the deficit of usable data exchange formats in design works. That, for instance, is done if you use the IFC, which is one of the standards, one of the technical standards belonging to the BIM series of standards. We have an inconsistency in regional and European design methodology. Yes, we do, but we need to harmonize that. And that is one of the aims that the European normative working is aiming at. So let's go to the next slide and do the summary even more general. What did we learn by today? Yes, the 19650 series is part of a large scale system of existing and proven standards of quality and information management. It's not a new invention. The 19650 is necessary to complete what we need to do to get rid of our deficits. And the 19650 defines some tools what you need, the tools that you need to have, that you need to work with. And the tools are not ready yet. Just take a look at the time scale, and you can tell that many of these things are happening in a very short time. 
So we are at a phase doing BIM and we are in a phase of work in progress. Let's work together. Let's go to the next slide. Can I ask you for a commitment? Please. So from now on, let's focus on efficient information management. And please help us searching for the most suitable tools to have a reasonable base and support their development. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Krieger. If you have further questions regarding the topic, please don't hesitate to contact us about email info at bsigroup.com or use our phone number. Our expert will be there for you and want to, want to answer to all your questions or get more information about the TUC. Thank you so much. <laughs>